I think I'm live. Hi everyone. This is Jennifer Palfini, your pampered chef. One second. Sorry, let me start again. Hi everyone. This is Jennifer Palfini, your pampered chef independent consultant coming to you live from my kitchen here in Reno. Probably gonna have to adjust this a few times. I seem like I go through this every time I do a go live. So this time I have it on my laptop that I'm doing it on. And then I'm uh, also recording on my phone. <laughs> and then I have my iPad so I can be able to see if you guys have any questions. So I'm just going to wait a minute before I get started. And we'll get going. There I am. Okay, good. Now I have my iPad so I can see you guys. Looks like I got a comment already. Nope. Oh, good morning. Eve. Oh, hi. Good. Placement's good. All right. Perfect. Great. Okay. So I literally, I have my iPad here. I'm doing this on my laptop and I'm recording it on my phone so I can use the content for later because I find these go lives um, are really uh, a lot of information that I put together and um, I never really put it together the same way twice. So I do have my coffee. Mm. Do you guys love coffee in the morning? I still love coffee in the morning. Um, can I hear a whoop whoop for coffee? Whoop whoop. So, fun story about this cup. I have this awesome cousin, and um, she lives in Tampa. She's just an amazing person. She actually lives in St. Petersburg. And um, she made me this coffee cup when she spent a summer on my couch in San Francisco when she was doing an internship at a um, PR firm. So, this is one of my very favorite coffee cups. And, Kate, if you're out there, I hope you heard this shout-out today. I still have it. It's from 2000 and. I want to say 2001 or two. Yeah, the summer that you were with me. You have to remind me what year that was. Oh, wait, hold on. Summer. Here it says right here, summer 2001. So, yeah. And today, um, I'm wearing this dress, which is kind of um, a symbolic dress to me. It's the dress that my husband is our anniversary today. Number four. And um, uh, this is the same dress I wore when we signed our papers to get married a couple of days before we got married. So... That's my story today. Coffee and dresses. So, and who gets to wear a dress anymore? I figured let's wear a dress. Let's dress up. Play a little Susie Homemaker, which if you know me, you know I'm definitely not a Susie Homemaker. So, um, oh, and a shout out. My braid here today was done by, I go to the salon in Reno here. I want to do a shout out to a local place because I just love local places and businesses. And I found this great hair shop. In, uh, I've been going there two years now since 20, I want to say since, yeah, October of 2018. So um, to Carlene Sanchez, um, she is the curly hair expert in the area. She trains all these wonderful people who end up having shops on their own. And when I went and got my hair done yesterday, um, instead of getting it blow dried, I got it done outside, which is so fun, you guys, because she has this beautiful tile floor that looks like Lake Tahoe. And it sparkles and she has like these surfboards and it's kind of a, like a Hawaiian thing because she spent some time living in Hawaii. And Carlene, if you're there, here's a shout out to you. And um, and so as an option, instead of drying my hair, they put it in a fun braid. And I'll tell you one thing, I could not braid this way and I cannot braid this way for my daughter. So anytime anyone offers like to do my hair in some cool way, um, also like, you know, my wedding, my hair was amazing, you know, uh, how it got done by this woman who did it. Um, I don't know if she's here, but a shout out to her too. It was kind of like a braid sort of concept hoof, like really cool thing. So anyway, I'm going all over the map here, but that's, I just think we should shout out to people that do a great job and people that we love their businesses. So, hmm. So I wanted to do that. And I had one more shout out and I wanted to shout out to Darty, who is your local Tupperware representative because um, I didn't buy this from her. It was a different party because I didn't know Darty at the time. But I just wanted to give a shout out to someone else's products because I have these Tupperware Fridge Smart containers. And my dilemma in my kitchen is my stuff always goes bad. So um, I wanted to just kick it off by talking about these Tupperware containers because they're really cool. They tell you all the different kinds of fruits and vegetables on here. And then it tells you how much you leave the container open to preserve the fruit or the vegetable. So I wanted to shout out for that because I just love these. And I have one on my counter. Um, because I just ran out of um, a fruit. I think it was cantaloupe or something like that. But I keep everything in my refrigerator in these now, and I just love them. So, on to Pampered Chef. So, um, as you know, I'm here for Pampered Chef. So, just want to get a few shout-outs out of the way first. But on that note of containers, 
I wanted to kick it off talking about our herb saver. Um, is there, oh, hi Nancy. Um, and I wanted to talk about the herb saver because it is a really unique product that I've never really seen or experienced before. And what I love about this herb saver product is that it saves your herbs. So I don't know about you, but rain is really dry here and I have a hard time keeping anything like fresh. It seems like even in the refrigerator sometimes it's a struggle. So herbs especially tend to go bad in my refrigerator, excuse me, two to three days. With the herb saver, it has this neat little bottom here that you fill halfway with water, which is really great because then you put your herb um, roots down there and it soaks in that water and then it creates a condensation on the inside that keeps your herbs fresh. And there's also a pocket on the side if you want to put other herbs in there that don't need um, water, that just need to stay fresh in the container. And then what I love about it too, which is kind of what I love about the, the fridge smart that I was mentioning, which is kind of how this whole thing kind of came up in my head today, was that it's this bright crane color. So when you look in your refrigerator, you put it in your refrigerator pocket. It fits in your pocket nicely here. And you're going to see it when you open your refrigerator, just like I can see all my fridge smart containers I have in here. Um, you're going to see it, you're going to notice it, and you're going to know, remind yourself, I've got to use those herbs. What am I going to use those herbs with? So I have parsley in here. And actually yesterday I used our product, the um, Quick Cooker. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. I used our, new, our product, the Quick Cooker, um, which uh, is right here, to make some delicious salmon. And um, I use the parsley to top the salmon. So I'll start off by talking about the quick cooker because um, while I'm not an expert on the quick cooker, I've just used it a few times now. Um, I did have an Instant Pot for a long time. I do have an Instant Pot for a long time. And this one's actually on loan from my fantastic um, host client and friend, Catherine, who um, won at her party in July $565 worth of products. And with it, five products at 50% off and one at 60% off. And two of the products that she took advantage of getting, which are, these are phenomenal deals with 60% off the air fryer, which I'll show you. And then 50% off the quick cooker, or she might even got, yeah, she got the 50% off the quick cooker was one of the things that she got. So I'm just going to plug it in real quick. And it's a short cord. So you just want to be sure that you're close to your outlet. You don't want long cords in your kitchen anyway, because you don't want things dragging around. So you always want to stay close to an outlet. So the quick cooker, what I love about the quick cooker versus any other quick cooker product on the market or instant pot is that it has this fantastic button here to release the steam. So um, I'd show you on my instant pot, but I don't really want to focus on that. I just want to talk about this product. Um, one of the challenges with um, the instant pots is that the steam release is kind of a, um, it's a shaky kind of a steam release button and you have to lift it up with something because you don't want to stay away from the steam. So what this does is that alleviates that whole problem and that safety issue. You push the button to release the steam. I mean, make sure you make sure the button's up to seal it. It's automatically sealed. And then to release the steam, the, the steam you push the button. And once it's done, the button will come up and the red uh, dot here will come up too. So I just love that feature because it's a nice safety feature. Um, it makes the nice sound when you shut it. When you open it. And you shut it and it lets you know when cycles are over and it has a bunch of cycles on it it comes pre-programmed with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 settings including custom things that you can do for custom time and custom temperature um, and also has a keep warm setting so it has a lot of things that are already pre-programmed for you that are just really intuitive it's so intuitive to use I would say when I got my other um, quick, my other Instant Pot cooker, I was very intent, in, um, intimidated to use it. And it wasn't until I got a friend's cookbook that walked me through that that I felt comfortable with it because I honestly thought I was going to blow up the house. I mean, I was just really nervous. With this product, um, and it is probably because I'm familiar with the Instant Pot now too, it works a lot in the same ways. It just has better features, easier to see. And I don't know about you, but I love the blue light. I love blue lights on anything, and all Pamper Chef products have this just really pleasant blue light. You can tell I have blue. The <laughs> blue I blew on today. Um, and, um, and that is just fantastic. So, like, just go through the settings here. Let me just um, start in the beginning. I'm leaning over because I can't really see. 
Um, okay, dessert, I see where it went. Okay, so we have sear, which is um, what you wanna use. Actually, I made some carnitas in this the other day. I'll post about that later. Um, I just seared the carnitas um, for a, you know a few minutes to get a nice um, flavor to them. It has steam for your vegetables. Slow cook if you want to slow cook. Um, proof. I don't know what proof is. I'll have to look at that. Someone probably knows what proof is. Um, I don't. Um, um, okay. I'm rolling around here and I can't see where the blue light's going because um, I'm at a weird angle. So let me just turn this for a second to get started. <laughs> okay. I'm going backwards now. Oh, I see it goes across. Yeah, it goes across, all the way across. Okay, so we did sear, steam, slow cook, proof. Um, then it goes to chicken and poultry. And it gives you like the recommended settings for it, which is, you know, pretty common for a, a, for a quick cooker to do that for you. Um, beef and pork, fish and seafood. And I used fish, fish and seafood just yesterday. I used it um, with salmon and it was uh, actually a three minute setting and it was perfection. Um, small story, I hadn't had salmon in my body for like almost two, three years because when I got pregnant, I could not eat salmon. How about you guys? Do you guys have, like, have food that you couldn't eat when you were pregnant and it was just like disgusted you and made you feel horrible? That was my relationship with salmon. So um, salmon, I cooked yesterday for the first time um, because our friends, um, one of our friends is not, he's, I don't want to call him a fisherman. He's a jack of many trades, but he loves to fish and he's a hunter and a fisher. And he brought over this gorgeous salmon for us. And so we had the opportunity, I had the opportunity to cook it. And so I cooked it in the quick cooker. So simple, you guys. I popped it on the tray inside. Um, after I, after I um, coated it with um, our seasoning salt, which is a new product. Let me go grab that for you so you can see that. Our seasoning salt is a new product for the fall. And I got to tell you, I use this seasoning salt on almost everything. It is so basic in your kitchen. And you know why it's basic? is It's not basic. It has garlic in it, paprika in it, onion, garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, and different kinds of salt, which is fantastic because, um, which is fantastic because you don't have to go and get all the spices and make that for yourself. It's already done for you. So this seasoning salt is really good. I highly recommend it. I'm super excited to have it in my kitchen and I'm using it like daily. Um, anyway, so I did the seasoning salt, a little bit of dill and pepper. And then I, um, I used some lemon and I squeezed some fresh lemon on it with one of my favorite products, which is the citrus press. Um, which I think is in the dishwasher because I just used it, but I'll just show you it. You guys have probably seen me use it every time I've cooked because I use this thing on a regular basis and it squeezes the heck out of citrus. It's amazing. So I use the citrus press to put some lemon on top and then um, I, in the pan, I put a, a cup of water in here and I sliced up some onions and some bell peppers, tossed those in there, and then I threw some butter in there and lemon juice, and I cooked it for three minutes, and it was fantastic. And then while it was cooking, I took my uh, nonstick eight-inch pan, and I just threw some butter and some dill and some lemon in there and created a sauce, and it was spectacular, you guys. Like, it was perfectly cooked. Um, sometimes when you cook salmon, you could tend to overcook it, and it could get rubbery, or it could get that brownish kind of color or gray color. This was just, like, perfectly, perfectly pink, perfect, perfect salmon color. So, anyway, that was my experience with the fish setting. So um, soup and stock, I don't know about you guys, but I love the quick cooker for making soups and stocks. In my Instant Pot, I would make chicken stock and beef stock all the time. Um, I, and of course, sometimes I use, you know, what store-bought stuff. But if I can, and if I want to make my own homemade chicken soup, I love to make my own stock. And you can do this in about 30 minutes on um, Instant Pot, and it's a setting that's set up for you. Then there's white rice, brown rice, because you know, white rice and brown rice cook very differently. So for example, white rice is gonna be four minutes and brown rice is gonna be 15 minutes and that's because it's more of that nutty flavor um, that you're getting with the brown rice. Probably another reason too, which someone else can explain. Whole grains. Um, and then you have beans, stew, chili, and dessert. So those are all the settings. Does anyone have any like kind of questions on the quick cooker? 
Yeah, this is, I'm so excited about this product. Um, while I'm borrowing my client's quick cooker, I actually have ordered this for myself and I can't wait to get it. Just in time for the soup chili uh, season, of which, you know, I make my sauces. I probably would do a toss up now between making my sauce and the quick cooker and the blender, because the blender is amazing for that too. And I went through the blender on a previous live, so I'm not going to spend any time on the blender today, but there's just options on how you want to make things and how fast you want to make them. Like, for example, with our blender, our deluxe cooking blender, you can put raw vegetables into that blender and it will make soup sauces um, for you um, in, in, in the actual blender. You don't have to use another pot. Um, and same with the quick cooker. That's another option. It just depends how you want to cook things, how much time you have, you know, what appliance you want to use. I think it's great to be have flexibility in all these. I mean, if I want to make a, if I, if I'm in the mood for making a sauce, sometimes I will just make it in a Dutch oven, you know, on my stove because I want to take more time and show the love for it and the experience. Same with like a risotto. Risotto, you can make it a rock crock in a microwave. You could make it in a quick cooker or you can make it on a stove top. So these are all just options of how you could cook. That's really what I have come to learn and come to accept is there's no right way to do anything unless it comes to baking, which, you know, baking, you gotta follow the rules. And that's probably why I struggle with baking so much because you gotta follow the rules. So, let's see what we have here. Oh, Lori, those are really good. And if you put a paper towel in there too, it lasts even longer. Nancy, does PC still carry the wipes that say, I'll wash you dry? I love those. Huh, I don't know. I don't, I don't recall those and I think at this point I'm pretty familiar with our, with our um, catalog, but I think that might have been a product that was but is no longer because I don't see it in here. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but on the back of our catalog, we list all the products that we sell. Um, and Pampered Chef sells, I think it's an average of 450 products in a catalog season. So they're always taking stuff out and putting stuff in every season. Like for example, we just added 20 or 25 new products, I don't know the exact number, to the fall. And that means we took away other products that, um, that we needed to let go of um, to keep the catalog at a manageable size and to keep our uh, inventory in a, in, a manageable, uh, in, in a manageable way. Yeah, I don't think they have those, the wash dry things anymore. Nancy, I'm sorry about that. I don't see them here. And, but I can ask around about that. Probably some consultant has some because they always keep extra stuff. One thing about being a consultant for Pampered Chef, which I love, is that a lot of what we get is for free or it's for a huge discount. So I just ordered a quick cooker at a 60, at a, at a 40% discount and an air fryer, no, air fryer at a 60, a quick cooker at a 60% discount and air fryer at a 40% discount. So that was, um, those were um, things that I wanted to get in my kitchen. Um, but also like when I had my first party, when I launched, when I did my launch party, I got like $565 worth of free products just because of my sales were so good. And I got, you know, an ice cream maker and all these things in my kitchen that I have now that I'm gonna show some of you, some of them to you. Um, I wanted to talk about baking because I don't feel like I talk about baking a lot. That's probably because baking is a little intimidating to me sometimes. So I'm always looking for ways that make baking more fun or kind of make baking a no brainer. I'm not going to have a problem with that. And so here's a couple things that I have that I found um, and some that I haven't tried yet, but that are on my list to try that I actually have. And I'm going to start off with, I mean, this is my ultimate favorite product of the year probably is our new letters and cake pan, you guys. I mean, look at this gorgeous color. Of course, it's blue. You guys know how much I love blue. Um, and it is going to be fantastic because this cake allows you to make letters and numbers, you know, with no problems. So, you know, here it shows you how to make all the different letters and it shows you how to make all the different numbers from zero to nine, A to Z, zero to nine. And how it works, it has these pieces on the inside that you arrange and where the pieces aren't is where your letters come in. So let me explain. Let's do a real live demo on this one because I've not used this cake pan before. But I got to tell you, when my daughter turns three in January, there will be a big old three there. So let's try to make a three. So if I'm going to make a three, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take piece B. So here's the cake. So I'm going to take piece B here and B here and piece D 
here. And that, if you can see that, you guys, is going to be a three. You see? Maybe that's backwards. Is it backwards to you? It might be backwards to you. So if it's this way, that will probably be bright ways to you. So it's going to make a three. So where the blocks are is where the cake is not. So the cake would fill in all these other spots, and then this would be blocking these areas out. So I'm going to tell you something, a big secret about me, and something I'm, I've always been ashamed of, but it just is the way it is. It looks like E this way, so maybe if I turn it this way, it looks like three. Oh, there it looks like three that way. Um, I am very spatially challenged. So when it comes to numbers and figuring things out, like looking at a diagram and figuring out where things go, I always get it mixed up in my head. So I have to really pay attention, just like recipes. If I look at a recipe and walk away, I'll forget. I need to like really pay attention to it, which is why I don't usually cook with recipes. I usually cook by intuition and feeling. Um, but so for this one, it makes it really simple not to mess this up, which I love because I could just see myself making a backwards cake or something like that. And so my daughter's name is Adriana. So here's how you would do an A. So an A would be piece C, which is this little square here at the top. And you count down one, two, it tells you, you know, what box, because these are all boxes. So even if you are spatially challenged like me and you have problems with these kinds of things, you could just count down to exactly where something needs to go to not mess, to not, you know, make a mistake. And you could see how that's an A. See how that's an A? And then you take these corner pieces at the ends, which will cut off the cake like this when you take the cake out. And you'll just cut those corner pieces off so that you'll have the A, which would be that way. Okay? So let's do, um, so yeah, so you could see, you could do any number at all, at all. Let's make a complicated one. Let's try a... W is actually pretty easy. It's just a couple of pieces. What has the most pieces? Oh my gosh, let's do J for Jennifer. Okay, so J is piece B up here, and then piece B here, and then little piece C. So we're making a block, basically. Oh, I see. And then we're going to do two Ds. And that is going to be our J. Can you see that? Oh, that's a J. So it goes like this. Obviously, obviously, you won't be lifting it up like this when you make your J's. So that's a J. So maybe I'll get a day cake from somebody this year. That would be awesome. Oh, I see. Let's do an N for Nancy. Oh, N is really easy, actually. So an N just goes up here, piece D. Oh, this is really fun, you guys. Gosh, you can have a lot of fun with this with your toddlers, too. I imagine my daughter will have a blast with this. So here's an N. And then with the N, you can see it's, just, it's a big block, really. You're going to take these corner pieces and shove them in there when your cake is done to create a, a cut here and then a cut in the middle and then two cuts on the bottom that are going to shape the N out. So like that and like that. So that is going to be your N. Let's see. Oh, looks like my sister Becky joined. Let's do it. Oh, B is the same thing, kind of, same concept. So concept for the B is we're going to take two C pieces. We're going to count two down. I'm going to leave a block of two in the middle, and that's going to be the B. You see the B, how easy the B is? It's almost like, a, it's almost like an eight. But then you're going to take this E piece and just snip off here, and then you're going to, like, snip off here to make an indentation. And then snip off here. I don't under, I don't, um, this is really, I mean, there's so much you can do with this, you guys. And let's see, should we do, yeah, this is just so cool. I'm so excited. This is the first time I'm really playing around with this, so you're getting my live feedback on this. Okay, so if we're going to do a, uh, let's do a, um, let's do a seven. So a seven is going to be piece A, which is this big piece. And that's going to start lower at the top go all the way to the bottom and then we're going to do two B pieces which are these longer fatter pieces and we're just going to connect those to the bottom and like that and there's your seven there's your seven is it backwards for you guys probably backwards for you guys so maybe that way yeah anyway you get the idea 
There's a lot of flexibility with this cake pan. And what's great about this cake pan for you guys is that this cake pan is this beautiful color. So even if you're just making a regular cake, it's going to look gorgeous in this pan. And who doesn't want to bring this pan to a party with a cake? Do you, um, someone, you know, one of my um, one of my guest clients was just like, oh my gosh, like you can make jello in it. You can make lasagna in it. Um, I'd imagine you could. I don't know. I, the temperature is for baking. So, I mean, you can make anything in it. It's a cooking pan. It's just another pan in your collection, another option on how you can make things. So that's the cake pan. So I'm super excited about that. So let's talk about baking in general. So I got this product when I had my party that is called the um, batter mix and pour. And so you make your batter in here, um, like say you're making brownies or a cake. Let's just say you're making a cake, for example. You make your cake in here, put all your ingredients in, and I just learned real time how to use this because I was like, how does this work? So I had to figure it out. So you slide this in and lock it. You lock this piece in. And this becomes your plunger. And then you put your products in here, your eggs, your milk, you know, whatever the order of the, of the ingredients are that you need to put in there. And then you lock it down and then you mix it. So no big mixing bowl, no big mess there. And then what's better about, what you can greater about it too, is you can dispense it right from, um, right from the, um, the container because once you take this top off, there's a dispenser here and it shows three different levels of dispensing um, for size. So it's good for pancakes, for cakes, um, for other things too. And it won't let you go any further than the dispenser lets you go. So you have three levels of how it could go. One, two, three. And how it works is, it won't work unless you go all the way up, sorry. You have to go all the way up like this and you would go level one. So we see how it's pushing down? Okay, so then here's level two, which is gonna be a bigger slice, a bigger scoop. And level three. So level three would be like your pancake. Wait, one second. I'm doing this up in the air, which you would not say or go. Yeah, so that's gonna go like that. It's gonna be your bigger, your bigger one. So there's your pancakes, there's your cakes, there's your brownies. Um, thicker things aren't gonna work as well in this because you wanna have more of a runny batter. Um, so if you have like a super fudgy chocolate chippy kind of brownie, it probably wouldn't work so well in this or in a Nutella brownie. But any other, any other kind of thing would work great on this. And you just plunge it up and dispense. And what's great about this is when it comes to making my other favorite product, brownies. For like the mini, for like this, um, for the for the mini brownie bites, which is what this is, you would use this lower setting, and just go boom, boom. I don't know if you can see. It would go boom, 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 boom. boom. You get the idea. So with this, uh, with that being said, it's time for a brownie. I made some brownies in this brownie pan the other day with my daughter, and it was so much fun. And we used we used this, but at the time I didn't. Um, I had, like, I had to figure out how to use it because I really didn't pay attention how to use it. So my advice to you on products that you don't know how to use, first of all, always ask me because I'll be help, happy to help you. And if I don't know how to use it, I will figure it out. So Pampered Chef has a lot of videos on how to use their products online. And they also have a lot of YouTube um, content on how to use their products online. Um, and mostly they're really intuitive once you figure a, key, a few things out. So anyway... We, um, we made brownies yes, the other day. We made them in the brownie pan. And if you could see how fantastically gorgeous these brownies are, they're all exactly the same size and they came out perfect. Um, to make the perfect brownie, I made sure that I sprayed my brownie pan significantly with um, nonstick spray. You could use butter, but I mean, nonstick spray is probably a better, uh, it's a better thing to use because it'll be easier to clean up and you want to make sure you spray it generously because you don't want those brownies sticking in there. And someone asked me, like, how do you release the brownies out of the brownie pan? Well, here's what I used. I used this because the surface is really small. You could, if you grease them enough, you could pop them out. I didn't want to do that. So I just released them um, with, um, this is our scoop and spread, by the way, which is one of my favorite, uh, other favorite products um, for the mornings and for sandwiches. Because, okay, here's your challenge with butter. And my brother is kind of gross right now because our butter dish broke, so we just have it on a plate. But what I love about this is the butter is always super hard when it comes out of the fridge, right? 
So you scrape this and it almost creates like little ribbons. My butter's a little warmer now. It creates little ribbons on your butter to get that nice thin spread. So your bread's soft, your butter's hard. What does that create? A messy piece of bread. So this will alleviate that problem. And what I love about this is you scoop out what you need, like the jelly or the peanut butter, and you spread it out with the same utensils. So you're not going to back and get a knife. And then also, after that, you could cut it because it's got a sharp, it's got a, it's a plastic um, scalloped edge that's sharp enough to cut, but you know, isn't gonna, you know, yes, it could do damage to you, I suppose, but uh, you just want to use it for the bread and cut it. It's not a, it's not a, you know, a metal blade or anything like that. So that's that, and that's the brownies. So that's the, the batter, the um, batter mix and pour. And again, it's a really nice, pretty color too, guys. Okay. So let's talk about this product, which I love, which is the whipped cream maker. Um, since we're talking about all things kind of baking and holidays, you always need whipped cream. And whipped cream is always, in my opinion, way better to make by yourself. And in order for me to do that, I have to pull out my big KitchenAid, which I love my KitchenAid. It is one of my favorite products. I don't use it as often um, as I thought I would, but I did use it for whipping cream a lot. And it takes a while. It's cumbersome to take out. Well, those days are over because this whipped cream maker here, this tiny little product, you put your whipped cream in here, and then you literally just whip it. You know what? I actually could do this right now because I have whipped cream, I think. Let me see if I have whipped cream. I do have whipping cream, and the, way, the reason I have whipping cream, you guys, is because I have an ice cream maker, and so I'm always making um, ice cream, and ice cream is whipping cream, milk, and vanilla, and a little bit of sugar, however much sugar you want to use. So this is, uh, this is so good. I only got to check expiration dates in my house. Okay, so we're just going to pour it to the fill line. So about a cup, I guess. There's like instructions again on how much you want to do for this. And then you probably would put a little sugar if you wanted. And you might want to do some cinnamon or something like that. I'm using raw sugar, which I probably shouldn't. You probably should use granulated sugar, but too late. I'm going to make chocolate whipping cream because that just sounds really good. So I'm going to put some cocoa in there. And this is with my um, powdered sugar shaker, which by the way, this is one of my other most loved products in my kitchen because it always reminds me of my grandmother. My grandmother had one of these, not exactly looking like this, but she had one and um, it brings back the memory of my grandma in the kitchen, which she's like my major influence person of cooking in the kitchen. For me, uh, growing up was spending time with her watching her make her Czechoslovakian Slovak dishes. Um, and I, what I realized with this is, it's not just for powdered sugar. You can use it for flour, you can use it for cocoa, and you can use it like for a cornmeal, like you know, a spread to do for pizza. So it's a very handy product. I'm definitely gonna get like at least one more of these, one for sweet stuff, one for like the flowers. But anyway, um, so here's, so we're gonna do a live demo. We hope this works out. So I'm just gonna pop this in with my chocolate and my sugar, and I'm just gonna pump it. Probably gonna be a little grainy because I used grainy. I used uh, my crystallized sugar, which I love. Okay, I can see it's working out here. Oh, a little bit more to go. Mm, get a taste of that. Mm, that's gonna be so good. So yeah, you just pump it. And this is a lot easier than going to get your kitchen in and out and mixing it for 10 or 15 minutes. And it's, it's easy to clean too because it'll go in the dishwasher for you. Okay, we're getting there. It's getting a little bit thicker. See that? A little bit more to go. Mm, I'm going to put some in my coffee. With my brownie. It's a sweet treats morning over here. Okay. That should do it. And yeah. So we got these nice peaks coming. You can kind of see how that um, probably needs to be mixed a little bit more to get it a little bit thicker. You get your arm work out in, you guys. <laughs> and there you go. There's your whipped cream. <gasps> Look at that. We're going to put some in my coffee right now. Scrape that in there. Oh, yum. I just love fresh whipping cream. So what a great product for the holidays. For You know, the thing with whipped cream is, 
you don't need a lot of whipped cream. When you actually use stuff that isn't processed and is real product, heavy whipping cream is heavy enough. You don't need any extra, like a big glob scoop, only if you want it, like I just put in my coffee. Mm, okay, so that's that. Oh, so good. Okay, so I wasn't planning on doing a demo, but there's my demo, make homemade whipping cream. And yes, I just realized I've licked my fingers. Okay, <laughs> things you do in your own kitchen that you shouldn't do live. Okay, so um, the other thing I want to talk about, which is a new product that goes along with the cake decorator, and it actually is, you could buy it as a set or buy it separate, is the, um, the it, with the cake pan, the letters and numbers cake pan, is the cake decorator. And so this is another intuitive product that you fill up with your frosting, and then you just push it down to release. So you want to have it right to about here, and then you see, just goes down. And that's going to pump all your frostings through and do some great piping. And it comes with um, <clears throat> a lot of tips. It comes with one, one, two, three, four, five, six tips. So how exciting is this? Because I don't know about you, but um, well, I'll tell you just a real life story. So. Uh, for my daughter's first birthday party, I decided to go ahead and make her homemade cupcakes with, um, with what's that frosting called? That's butter buttercream frosting, okay? So and I bought this little decorator to decorate the top because I want to make them fancy. Well, come the day of the party, my frosting is too hard. I can't put it through the decorator tip. It's a plastic bag, and it's just this huge mess, and I've got 50, you know, cupcakes to decorate. What a joy would this have been to have at that time because I just would have put my frosting in there, maybe thinned it out a little bit, and just pumped my way through decorating those cupcakes. And my cupcakes turned out fantastic, so it wasn't about the cupcakes, but it was about I was really stressed because I literally had to frost all these cupcakes, all 50 of them individually, when my intent was to make them beautiful with a decorative design. Um, and so this year, I will attempt to make cupcakes again. And I'll be using my Easy Cake Decorator. And again, that comes as a set if you want to save a little money with the numbers and letters cake pan. So you can see how easy it is to change out tips. You just slide them in there and screw it on. And the tips are so creative. Like this is like kind of like the half moon shape. And this is kind of like that, you know, that burst you always see. Here's like a bigger, fatter burst. Here's a middle sized burst. Um, here's just like for decorating with, uh, if you wanted to write something. And then this would be kind of to fill, um, fill the um, cupcakes with. Um, which will bring me back to another product, which is our core, which um, is a new product in the fall catalog. I've used it on pineapple so far, but you can use it on any kind of fruit. And also, to keep in mind, going back to the cake decorator here, you could use this core to hollow out a cupcake and fill a cupcake, which how much fun would that be? Um, so I love how these products work together, you know? So if you wanted to fill, um, if you wanted to fill a cupcake, and this would be a filling, a cupcake filling one, or fill something, then you would take your core, core out your cupcake a little bit, pick that piece up, drop it out, probably eat it because it's gonna be good, and then fill it with your filling. How clever is that? So that's the core product, which is great for like your apples, your pineapple, whatever you're gonna fill. I mean, you could fill potatoes with it. Think about it. If you want to stuff a potato and bake a potato in the oven, you want to stuff it with cheese when you bake it, you could do that. Um, I'm sure there's many more uses of that that very clever people out there can figure out that I haven't thought about yet for that product. Um, speaking of potatoes, it's kind of funny how this is all working out. Let's talk about our new potato masher. This is a fantastic, Product, but it's not just a potato masher, it's a masher. So talking about baking, let's talk our bananas and our apples when we're making those fillings um, for our breads and our cakes and our pies. Um, what I love about this masher is that it folds down to compactly fit into any drawer. Mm. And it's a gorgeous stainless steel product. I don't know if you know this, but all of our utensils are just so gorgeous, guys. 
They're all, most of them are stainless steel. They're robust, so you're not going to drop them. And I know from like my past utensils, comparing these to them, I'm like, oh, that really feels different. Like it just feels different to cook. It feels better to cook. It feels more secure to cook. Um, and all our utensils, here's just a few that I have, just make cooking easier. I, I don't know any way to say it because I mean, I've cooked for a long time and I love to cook. But I was just managing through cooking, you know, dealing with the products that I had. When I got these products, they just feel so much better and so much different in your kitchen, however you use them. You've got a better grip on them. They're heavier. You don't drop them as much. And they're just easier to use. And they're also, even though they're firm and stable, they also have a flexibility that goes along with them. So they can move around as you need them to move around. So that would be my, that's my utensil thing. And Again, they all have these beautiful handles that are just, they just look nice in your kitchen. So when you bring them into the table and you serve, it's going to be a beautiful piece that you're serving at your table. Speaking of serving, I swear you guys, I had no plan for this uh, morning. So this is kind of funny how this is working out. Let's talk about our new product for the fall, our utensil set. I can't even explain to you how gorgeous this is because the pictures and the catalogs just do not do it justice nor on the website. So these is a three set, um, a spoon, a spatula, and a spaghetti, I guess you call it a spaghetti noodle spoon or spaghetti grabber, whatever. But it, it also has a measurement for your spaghetti in here, which is awesome because you can make sure that you get the right portion that you want. Um, and um, I love that because I'm always like, how much spaghetti do I need? Like, do I need the whole box? Or I open the box and I throw away the box and then I have it in containers and all that stuff. So these, what's gorgeous about these is they're made of acacia wood, which means you do not put them in the dishwasher, guys. Sorry, you can't put these in the dishwasher. But these tips are robust and you could cook up to 475 or 450 degrees and on the stove top with them. Um, the wood is beautiful. I don't know if you know about acacia wood. I really didn't know that much about it until Pampered Chef. But every piece of acacia wood that's in a product is unique and different because each piece of wood is different that it comes from. And it could be the graining could be different. The color could be a little bit different. Um, the pattern on it could be a little bit different, but it's what really makes it unique and gorgeous. And with the acacia wood, I'm gonna move on to one cool product that is acacia wood that is new that I have cooked on, which is our pizza peel. I've already, I feel like I've spent a lot of time on the stoneware, so I don't wanna go over that again, but you know, our new stoneware has just come out and our stoneware is um, very different for the first time in 40 years. You could put it in the broiler, you could put it in the microwave, you could put it in the dishwasher. It's broiler safe, it's dishwasher safe, which is like insane, and you can preheat the stone. You never used to be able to do that, but now you can with this. And all our new stoneware has a pattern on the back. It's like a wave pattern, so you can identify it differently from your current stoneware. I am gonna show you just because now I know you're gonna have to. So this would be our classic stoneware, which doesn't have that pattern on the back. This is a collection piece. This is actually from my uh, my mother-in-law who passed away. We found this um, when she moved when we moved uh, her things out of her house, and I didn't realize at the time what it was until I was looking into my cabinets about a month and a half ago, and I was like oh my gosh, that's stoneware. And oh my gosh, where did that come from? And I was like, oh, it's from, it's from mom. So this is, I get a little teary. I might think about that because today is my anniversary and she was a big part of our uh, wedding day. Um, but anyway, um, so that's the classic stoneware. So there's, there's really, there's just marking on the bottom. It'll say Pampered Chef, USA, which by the way, all our stoneware is made in the USA. And our new stoneware, which I've cooked, you know, pizza on this a couple of times already has the wave pattern, which just makes it identifiable to make sure that you know that it can go all those other places that our classic stoneware cannot. And you know what? I'm keeping my classic stoneware forever because I love it. And am I going to put my stoneware in the dishwasher? Sure. At some point, have I yet? No. But I know a lot of people have and they're like, put my stoneware in the dishwasher, watch out you guys, and it's gonna be fine. So going back to the acacia wood, the pizza peel, this is our new product. Um, so you can slide that pizza into the oven when you preheat it, make your pizza on another surface, put it on the pizza peel and slide it onto the pizza stone. 
take it off the pizza stone, slice it up, put it on, or take the take it off, put it back onto the pizza stone, let it cook a little bit, put it on a baker's wrap, slice it, put it back on the on the um, pizza peel, and you've just got a great way to serve up pizza. It's just so much fun. Your kids and your family's gonna think like you have this little pizzeria thing going between the stoneware and the pizza peel itself. And with the baker's rack, hey, I mean, you put your pizza on there, it feels like you're really in a, you feel like you're really in a pizza, in a pizza shop. So I love these baker's racks. I've never had them before. And I'm so excited for them for the holidays because guess what? They're stackable. And my cookies are gonna be cooling on baking racks finally. <clears throat> I leave my cookies in the pan too long and they burn outside the oven or get extra um, dry. Um, and I never have any way, anywhere to put my, my cookies, so I put them on like miscellaneous plates all over the kitchen. And in the holidays, that just gets kind of crazy. So now I've got these great baking rats, it's the rake set stack, that I'm just going to pop all my cookies on here and let them cool properly. I'm really trying to learn how to do things properly because I cut a lot of corners. And with products like these, it makes it easy for you not to have to cut those corners. Um, going back to like snacks and kids and things like that, just a couple more things I wanna cover. I know we're almost out of time, that's crazy for not having a plan of what I was gonna talk about. But um, this is our snack bar maker. So if you buy a lot of snack bars, which I do, my daughter loves bars, she's always like, mom, can I have a bar? Mom, can I have a bar? And we buy a lot of bars that are um, from the grocery store, but I haven't made bars in this yet, but I'm super excited about it because I think our whole family will eat these bars. And they store really nicely with a cover, which is great. It comes as a set or as individual pieces, and it's that silicone surface. So you're gonna be able to put these in the fridge, in the oven, or wherever, and cook up the cook up those bars. Freeze them flat if you wanna freeze them. Um, if you wanna make like a, like a ice cream kind of thing or a yogurt bar to put in the freezer, you could do that as well. Just some ideas there for you. With the snack bar maker. Um, and then I'm going to talk about pancakes. So my daughter loves pancakes. We make pancakes. Oh, by the way, this is a lid, you guys, for the whipped cream maker. So after I make the whipped cream and I want to store it in the refrigerator, I just pop a lid on it and it's good to go. So let's go ahead and do that because I don't want to ruin this whipped cream. Look at that whipped cream. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh. I'm gonna put some more in my coffee. My coffee's being all whipped cream at this point, but that's okay. So, hmm, I just, I just can't tell you guys enough how much, hmm, I'm sorry, I just can't not do that. Um, how much my life in my kitchen has changed since I've really paid attention to what I'm putting into my body and my family's body. I think a lot about not using processed foods. I'm sure we have a couple processed foods that we buy. That's not the lid, this is the lid. The lid's on the bottom, I always forget that. This is for the um, the batter mixing pour. But yeah, you see the lip fits right on there. Mm. And like, just these little things, like making your own whipped cream, making your own cakes. Um, and of course, you know, we use box things that we use kits for, like the brownies. I use Ghirardelli double chalk, double fudge brownie mix because it's awesome and I love it. Um, but I try not, I try to, as much as I can, Try to make things on my own. I, there's corners I cut. One of them is pancake mix. I use Christie's pancake mix. But the pancake mixer here um, gives you, you know, decorate. it gives you decoration. It gives you ingredients and guidance of how much to use to make pancakes. And it's got this weighted ball, so you shake it up with the ingredients. So we're talking the eggs, the milk, the flour, the baking soda. And it tells you the order to put it in and how many pancakes you want. How easy is that? And then even to make it even easier for you, the top here is intuitively a tablespoon um, measurements. And what I love about pancakes is that we also have these silicone molds, which are fantastic because these can go right on the grill. I have the nonstick grill, griddle, and I gotta tell you guys, I love it. I had this griddle for a long time that was supposedly not stick that was just awful. It was just awful, it didn't do its job. This you can grease or not, you know, they tell you you should grease it. I was trying to say, do I really have to grease it? Do I have to use butter? So sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but you just like put some butter or grease into the molds, put the molds on there, let them warm up, pour your pancake mix in. If you're adding blueberries, add them on top, that's what I do. And, and, and it is amazing because as these pancakes are, are cooking, 
Literally, you will be able to move them around in the pan if you want. So you're like, oh no, I want to put some more on. I've got six. You could put six if you wanted. Or you start them and they're going and you want to do another round. They're so easy to move around. They absolutely do not stick. And then when you're done, here's the fun part for you and your kids. We have these great emoji molds, um, which are just so much fun. My daughter just loves them. We make the pancakes and we put the molds on top. And then we take chocolate, because that's so much fun to do chocolate, but you could do powdered sugar, you could do sprinkles, whatever you want to do. And we do these little molds on top of the pancakes. And so they have fun faces. And we talk about emotions, like, are you tired? Do you want to pick a tired one? You know, she's tired. Or it was funny, the other day she put, picked the angry one, or the one that's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, that's her mood today. That's good to know. So you just pop those on top, and she picked happy. And I'm like, oh, good, she's happy. You never know with toddlers. And this one... And this one, this is a cute one. She did pick a crying one because toddlers cry a lot. And I guess she was feeling emotional. And I mean, they're just so cute and they're so much fun. They're just like great to have and just a great experience to have with your child when it comes to cooking in the kitchen. And for adults, I mean, when you're having a brunch or whatever, how fun would it be to give somebody an emoji pancake that's shaped like a star? I mean, it's just cute, you know? It just brings joy into people's lives. And I love products that like that, that bring joy into people's lives. So while we're talking about baking, I want to talk about another product that I love, which is our cutter. Um, I don't know about you, we had like pie servers and stuff like that, but they always are flat and they don't have a serrated edge. This has a serrated edge so we could cut right on it and get the piece that you want in the shape that you want. And it's got a nice protective cover. So that's great for your baking too. Um, oh, let's talk about this, which I love. This is our baker's roller. And it has two sides. It has a real tiny side and like a, a wider side. And it's great for your pies, for your pizzas, getting around into the corners and getting the detail. Um, and then you can clean it off really easy. It's got a scraper that's built right into it, which I just love that. Um, I've used this quite a bit for pizzas. Uh, I plan to use it a lot for the holidays, although I do have my favorite product in my kitchen, which is for my grandmother's kitchen which is I have her rolling pin, so I will use that, but I have a feeling this one's a lot more easier to use, and I do struggle with this sometimes, so I will be using both, but this is just a great product, just to be able to, just to move dough around and spread things out, so that. Um, and I love how this little tool just pops right in here, like that. So, oh, this, this is a $10 product that if you don't have this in your kitchen, you need it. And I'll tell you, I'll give you a couple reasons why you need it. One is it's great for moving stuff around in your kitchen, scooping stuff up. So for example, these mats are great. And why are these mats great? Because I'm making chicken, I'm making vegetables, and I'm making fruits all on a cutting board. I'm not going to use the same cutting board. I'm going to have to wash it each time because the, the meat is going to cause a situation then I'll have to protect, you know, I'll have to wash it, make sure that I don't get any germs or bacteria on it. And so these plastic mats are great because I can just taste it. I can make stuff with my scraper, scrape it off, wipe it down and use it again, or pick one of the other two that I have. I use one for my fruit, one for my vegetables, one for my meats. Um, and then this scraper organizes and takes stuff off with the scraper also. If you have counters, guess what? scrapes off your counters and gets all those crumbs off, which I love it for that purpose because having a toddler, you always have crumbs everywhere in your house, everywhere, on your dining table, on your kitchen table, wherever, on your counters. And this is a great way to get those crumbs organized and off the counter, which I love. Um, and I just love this because it's just, it makes me feel good to know that I'm getting everything off a mat and moving it because I can like take this mat from my sink and put it into a pot across the room or carry stuff easily without the worry of like, I'm gonna drop it like I went on a cutting board or that it would spill and also taking it to the trash, fold it. And then if I have ingredients in here like flour, I could fold it and pop it into my bowl. So it's great for that, it's great for that too. So that is a great product for baking um, and for cooking in general, both of these. Um, Here's another one I want to talk about when we talk about kids is the sandwich press. Kind of goes along with this, um, with this uh, scoop and spread. Scoop and spread, make your sandwich. You want your kids to have a fun little square. Press it, and then it'll press the bread in it. You know, get some, you get some little bit of um, 
of uh, distribution of weight on there to press it down all the way down and get it in there and then just take it out and you have a fun little sealed sandwich as an option, which is great. Um, these salad claws were a new product in the spring and I've never had salad claws. I usually like use a fork and a spoon or whatever, the fancy set. These do the job. They toss like you would not believe and they catch everything and scrape it. That's what I love about Pamper Chef products is they do what they're supposed to do. They actually grab stuff and eliminate waste. And that's what I love about these. And then they have dishwasher safe and then they nest in and snap in like that so they fall flat in your drawer. I have a drawer in my kitchen of, with all these items in it. Some of these that I've shown you, like the, the baker's roller, um, the burger and slider press, which is another great product that you can make burgers on one side to pop burgers in, which I just did the other day to press your burgers so they're all uniform in the same size, so of course they're gonna cook better. And then I make sliders for my daughter on the other side. So she gets a smaller burger, she doesn't need the really big burger. But I have all these things, like these pancake um, presses and the emoji things in a drawer where it's accessible to her and it's so cute what she does with that drawer. Like she goes through that drawer all the time and she has so much fun with it. She pretend cooks and she really enjoys it. And um, most of my journey in the kitchen is about including my daughter in the memories of the kitchen and showing her that the kitchen is fun, teaching her that cooking can be really joyous. And it's just like something she's gonna grow up doing, which I just love. So um, when I think about everything that I'm doing with Paper Chef, I think about how much it's going to impact and affect my daughter. She's not only gonna see her mom work, but she's gonna see her mom have a good time doing her work. Not every day is joyous in the kitchen, don't get me wrong. We're not Susie Homemaker over here. This isn't Leave it to Beaver family. But the things that I bring into the kitchen now, I'm very mindful of and I'm thoughtful of and I use them. And they're making a big difference in my attitude in the kitchen and how I think about the kitchen and how she is going to perceive what the kitchen is like and what food is like. She eats everything. She doesn't, um, she's not that kid that just eats pizza and chicken nuggets or won't eat this or won't eat that. She eats what she feels like, which is a whole other issue, but she'll eat just about anything at any time of day, uh, any kind of food that's put in front of her when she feels like eating. And I think that's because we're exposing her to all these great options of food. We're not giving her all the little kids to food all the time. She's eating what we eat. She watches me cook. She gets involved in it. She knows how to crack an egg. Um, seriously, she could have her own, get your own TV show, I'm sure, someday and do a phenomenal job at it. But um, I just wanted to close with that. You know, the kitchen is all about making it for you and what makes you joyous. If you don't like an ingredient, don't use it. If you don't like a tool, get rid of it. If something isn't working for you, stop using it. Put things in your kitchen that are going to be mindful and going to bring you joy and going to bring ease into your life, not complication and um, drama or grief. The time we spend in the kitchen is a lot. And it's really important that we show our families and our kids that the kitchen is a real place where we can create, we can express, and we can come together to enjoy meals at the table as a family, especially in a time where we need to spend more time at the table as a family than ever. So I'm gonna end with that. I'm gonna be a little emotional because I'm an emotional person and I'm emotional about the kitchen and I love what I do and um, Family is the most important thing to me. So um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed today. I feel like I didn't really get to talk to you that much. Um, I hope you watch and you learn something and I hope you reach out to me if you have any questions. I wanna be in your kitchen, I wanna be helping you out and I wanna show you how you can have joy in your kitchen too. Okay, thanks you guys, bye, have a great day.